it's that time of the week again. Yes, it's another edition of Ask GC Anything. Now, whilst writing this script, I couldn't actually come up with another funny pun, so we are gonna go straight into the questions. Fortunately, I hear you say. Now, first up is this question from Pablo Ruiz, who asks, firstly, hello, Pablo. Hi, guys, last week I was riding seriously fast, and I had the idea of taking my hands off the bars and my feet off the pedals at the same time. I crashed. Does this work to improve my balance or am I an idiot? Hashtag talk back. I kind of think you might have hit the nail on the head at the last part of your sentence there. Um, clearly that didn't work for you in terms of helping you balance on your bike, but incredibly, there are quite a few tips that we've got to do exactly that, to help you balance on your bike, especially if you're new to the sport. Check this out. This one will really help to improve your balance on the bike. It's a little bit like the cycle equivalent of walking a tightrope. Because riding really slowly means that when you do need to turn the handlebars in order to keep your balance, the corrections that you make have much less of an effect, which leads to those really exaggerated movements and that characteristic wobble. Sorry, I'm sorry, I nearly had me off. Sorry, mate. Now, practicing riding slowly will get your body used to balancing without resorting too much to steering. Now, at first, you may find it pretty hard, as it is a bit difficult, but if you've got a few spare minutes, it's really worth the investment. Well, next up, we have this question from Miguel Ortiz down in the comment section, who asks, what exercises can I do in the gym to improve my cycling fitness? Well, thanks very much for getting in touch, Miguel. Now, the answer to this question will firstly depend on the type of cycling that you're doing and what your specific objectives are. So for example, if you're looking at generally improving your fitness across the board, so in terms of your endurance, your stamina, and maybe climbing, then your reliance on going to the gym will be pretty minimal. Aside though, I would advise for doing some core work, which is something that pretty much all professional cyclists do all year round, and that just improves your, stabili your stability on the bike and ability to kind of get the power through in the kind of right places. Uh, but if you're looking at improving your explosive power, so you're sprinting, then a degree of gym work could help. So for example, some of the finest road sprinters in the world, like Andre Greipel and Marcel Kittel, they do spend time in the gym doing kind of things like squats and bench presses. And also track sprinters, well they spend an inordinate amount of time in the gym, not only working on their legs, but on their upper body as well, to really help cope with the immense amount of power that they put through their bikes. But for a more general workout, to help you generally with road cycling, how about looking at this video? So we're going to start off with exercise number one, the mountain climber. Quick demonstration, Simon, for everyone at home. Let's get going. So as you can see, he's in press-up position. His knees are coming towards his chest. The clock has started. 45 seconds. Three, two, one. Starts now. And we're off. Have started yet? Oh, oh we're off. God. Good. So holding a good press-up position, basically. His chest is over his hands. Come forward just a little bit. Keep that chest proud get the oxygen into the system all the way through. So as you can see, it's a full on cardio workout. <sighs> Last week on the rapid fire round, I did 11 questions. This week, I'm going for 12. Yes, 12 questions. One audience member this week, count me in. Three, two, one. Here we go. This first up for this is H Pocus. If you obtain the jersey in the Tour de France and the next stage you lose it, do you still get to keep the jersey or does it go to somebody else? H Pocus, you get to keep it. Next question from Merck86. Do I slow down or gain speed if somebody is slipstreaming behind me or is there no effect at all? Uh, Merck86, thanks for getting in touch. There is a benefit, but only slight estimated between three and 7%. Next up is this from Konstantin van Rudstedt. What happens in a race when all the tires are punctured and there are no spares left? Can the service cars repair them, thus creating a technically unlimited supply of spares? Great question, Konstantin. Thanks very much for getting in touch. I don't know if it's ever happened. I've never come across it myself, but technically it will be very, very difficult indeed because most professional riders these days run tubular tires. They're very, very difficult to repair indeed, but let's assume everybody's running high, pr high pressures and there's an unlimited supply of inner tubes, then it could be done. 
Next up is this from ES2 Screenshots, who asks, Hi GCN, I'm currently 15 years of age and looking to get into racing. Is it possible for me to do road races? Are they youth specific races? How does it work for my age group? Given that you're 15, uh, there should be races for you, or there will be races for you, um, but they will primarily be on circuits, closed circuits, which are far safer and enable you to learn your craft and road school a lot better. Best thing to do, go online, get in touch with your, your governing body or your cycling federation, and they should be at a signpost to some races that are relatively local to you. Okay, next up we have this from Elias Abru over on Twitter. Hi guys, I've got a doubt. What's the etiquette when trying on bib shorts? Do you go commando? or do you wear pants? You wear pants. Next up is this from Ryder Bent over on Twitter again. Have you ever tried a recumbent road bike? It would be cool if you could do a versus with one. I've never tried one. I had a chat with Simon later on. He's never ridden one, but that is an absolutely cracking idea that we have written down. Next up is this from Chandler Ress. If you use a turbo trainer, do you need to use a specialized tire? Not the brand, a tire specifically for a turbo. I've heard both options used and argued. Well, I used to use old tires that weren't really roadworthy and stick those on the back, but they did wear through relatively quickly because of the soft tire compound. Now, specialized turbo tires, I one specifically for turbo trainers, uh, have a far harder compound and therefore last a lot longer. It's completely up to you what you invest in, but the specialized tire will actually last you a lot longer. Next up is this from Tim Mayo. I wanted to do a fasted ride post work. Sounds funny. Should I just not eat after lunch? Should I even eat lunch? Well, Tim, thanks for getting in touch. Technically, a fasted ride is done is one that's done in the morning after sleeping and getting up and just having a coffee, no breakfast. Very difficult to do in the middle of the day, but you do need to do a proper fasted ride about a 10 or 11 hour gap. So my suggestion would be, although it's not proper fasted, is to have breakfast, miss lunch, then go out for your ride, but it is pretty brutal. Next up we have this from Samichi Rubenstein. As a 15 year old boy wants to get into cycling, what training would you advise? Do I need a power meter? Should I just ride and enjoy it? Well, great that you're just getting into cycling. You don't need a power meter just yet. Just ride and enjoy it, and you'll soon get to know whether you like the sport or not, and then you can start investing in a little bit more better equipment, better clothing, and maybe a power, beat, power meter in a couple of years' time. But first and foremost, as a youngster, you just need to enjoy riding your bike. Uh, penultimately is this from uh, James uh, Franklin. Actually, it's not penultimately, three questions to go still. Any issues with running different size tires front and rear? 25s foul my rear caliper, but I like the idea of more comfort up front. No problem at all, Tom Bonin did it in Paris Bay. I've also done it as well, actually, because I read that Tom Bonin did it, and there's no problem at all. Next up we have this from René Munoz. Hi GCN, does listening to music, wearing in-ear headphones, whilst riding improves cycling performance? I hardly never wear these things while training because of safety issues, good, but when I do wear them, I do feel more motivated. I never wear them out on the open road at all. I do think it's dangerous. You need to be able to listen to what's going on all around you. We have mentioned this a few times before, but without a shadow of a doubt, when you're riding on the indoor trainer or in the gym, they do definitely help with your motivation. And I think they actually help just get that little extra few percentage points out in terms of your training benefit. So yeah, Philly Boots with tunes when training indoors. Uh, next up, and indeed finally, we have this from Dave Wallbank, who asks, how do sprinters change gear? without grinding gears during a sprint. Is there a special technique or do they just literally grind through them? Well, thanks for getting in touch, Dave. Um, it's all about early selection of the gear before you start sprinting. Last thing you really wanna do, especially with mechanical gearing, is change gear as you're putting a lot of torque through the bike. Although the way that rear mechs have been designed recently, uh, that, that happens on far less occasions. And also, of course, with the advent of electronic gearing over the last few years, we do see sprinters quite often have satellite sh shifters on the drops, so they can actually change gear very smoothly and efficiently midway through a sprint. But think back to the 1970s, 1980s, and even earlier, when the sprinters had to change gear on the down tube, well then it really was a fine art and they had to get the gear selection right before they opened up their sprint. Well, let's slow things down just a little bit after that brutally fast rapid fire round with this question from Hitesh Doriwala over on Twitter, who asked, what would have more influence on speed, fast tires or fast rims? Well, that is a cracking question, which I think we need to split into two. First off, let's tackle tires. Well, over the last few years, there's been a real trend 
towards riders, professional cyclists in particular, using a wider a tyre wider profile because they offer far less rolling resistance and therefore their eye efficiencies to be had. So a 28 millimeter tire, for example, has a two to three watt saving over a 25 millimeter tire, which is pretty significant. So next up, let's look at rims. Now, as we know, a deep section rim is far more aerodynamically efficient as it uh, has far less drag than a box section rim. But how much difference? Now, Simon did a test a couple of years ago, in fact, on a flat bit of road where he tested a standard alloy box section rim over a Zip 808 NSW rim. And to be quite frank, the results were absolutely staggering. So to answer your question specifically, what has the most influence over speed? It is definitely rims. But to optimize your speed, of course, get a deep section, wide rim and a wide tire, and you should go pretty fast. Now for that test specifically, here it is, Simon, Give it a go. There he is on his alloys. Now they're so fast, in fact, that it's got me thinking. If this pair of wheels could save me 5% of my total power when riding along, now that's the difference between my 20 minute maximum power and my lactate threshold, so the power I can sustain for one hour. So if I did my 20 minute test on a set of alloy shallow wheels and then replaced them with these, could I sustain the same speed of that 20 minute test for one hour on a flat circuit? Well, that's it for another edition of Ask GC Anything. Make sure you do keep those questions coming using the hashtag TalkBack on social media and of course, down in the comments section below. Now, if you haven't already subscribed to the Global Cycling Network and so you don't miss another cool video, make sure you click on the globe. Now, if you click just down here, you'll get a sneak peek of the brand new Global Triathlon Network, which I urge you to subscribe to as well. And if you click just up here, there you'll find a slammed versus non-slammed GCN Dust Science.